<laughs> no. Ah! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What just happened? Yeah. Board. Let's get out. No. You. No. Ow. Hello, ladies, gents, and jellyfish wranglers! In this lesson, I'm going to tell you everything I know about reaching and beating the cosmic ocean. These are not specifically pro tips, it's just the knowledge and methods that work for me to finally get the 799 win. This is a video for the strugglers among us who set out to accomplish this utterly unreasonable challenge. Perhaps the most important lesson that I learned in the process is that it's not just about beating the 94 levels of Cosmic Ocean. A good half of the challenge, besides not putting a gun in your mouth, is getting there consistently. So let's deal with that first. In case you don't know, the goal is simple. Shoot a defeated Hundun with the hose bow and the golden arrow. The arrow comes from the sun challenge in the sunken city, while the bow is found in the moon challenge in either the jungle or volcano. Here's the full official chain real quick. Find a key for the Ujara chest in the dwellings. It will spawn in either 1-2 or 1-3, whichever is it infested with turkeys. If you go jungle, never go jungle. The eye will blink when close to the black market entrance. Buy or otherwise acquire the headjet in there. If you go to Volcana, use the eye to drill down to Vlad's castle and steal the crown at the top. Either way, do the boring challenge when you find it and dig until you find the hose bow, which always spawns in the bottom half of the challenge area. Carry it to Olmec's lair. Over in this corner, Gloop will take your bow and carry it all the way to the sun. City. Defeat Olmec by getting him to the lava pool at the bottom, go into the back layer and grab the Ank at the top. Now if you go tight pool, your headgear will let you grab Excalibur and 4-2, which you need to carry into Abzu. You find Abzu by entering the long deep cape in 4-3, disturbing the idol at the bottom and going through the door that lies behind the deadly lava. The Ank will let you resurrect at the top after getting roasted. Use the sword to break into Ugly Turtle and grab the Tablet of Destiny. If you go Temple, murder Anubis for his scepter and carry it to the City of Gold entrance in the next level. Sacrifice yourself on the Golden Altar and the Ankh will let you pass through to Pepe's Domain. Defeat the disembodied head at the top for his Tablet of Destiny. Carry on to Neo Babylon, find this entrance in 6-2 and read the Tablet of Destiny to know which little fellow to carry through the exit. In the next level you will hatch into Flyboy, the whole reason why we do all these things because you can ride it to the Sunken City entrance above Pointless Patty over here. Find Gloop and the bow in the Sunken City, grab the Golden Arrow from the Sun Challenge and carry on to 7-4 to fight Hundun. Shoot its eyeball and that's it, that's the portal in, super easy, now the real challenge begins. So, only two of these steps are 100% unskippable before fighting Chicken Snake. You need the bow and you need the arrow. There's no getting around either and you will very much resent that. You can even use violence to acquire them, but there really isn't much of a reason if you're not speedrunning. It is tradition to quench your bloodthirst by shooting Ratface in the head as soon as you get your arrow. <laughs> Anyway, some of the skips are enormously useful. They help a lot toward consistency, so let's get into it. The fuck you, Jedi, is usually not difficult to get, but if there's a really annoying spawn, you can just skip it and bomb your way down in Volcana instead of using the drill. It'll cost you up to 10 bombs, depending on how many powder kegs you can hit. It may be smart to bomb your way down anyway if the drill went down through 20 bajillion pools of lava. It often beats waiting for it to stop draining, and that way, the bomb you have strapped to your back won't catch fire. In the jungle, finding the black market is real tricky without the eye, but not impossible. Listen for the drums in the back layer. And look around for suspicious caves. The ghost jar usually spawns very close to the entrance, but not always. You certainly need a bit of luck to find it. Just so you know, neither drill nor black market ever spawn on the same level as the boring challenge. You can save yourself some time and grief in the Olmec fight by using the Olmec shortcut. Let me recycle the video I made about it. Here's the safest way to do it. Leave Olmec behind and put the bomb right between these two blocks. If you get it just right, it's going to blow up all eight tiles. I have never gotten it right. I always mess it up. So I just leave this little block over there that we can simply clean up with an additional bomb. If you do it perfect, it's a three bomb process. If you do it Blargo style is going to be a four bomb nonsense. So anyway, that bomb goes up, then you put another one in the corner, 
and then once that explodes, put another one right there in the other corner. Leave this block up here, it will help you to get over to the other side at the end. Now go back out there and bring Olmec over, and just wait for him up here. Then when he starts uh, trying to hump up your leg, you just put that bomb down there, and as soon as it, ex uh, right before it explodes, go over to the other side. Olmec's not gonna wanna come up here, it's a little too far. So you can either jump just like this, and he will try to catch you. You can jump on top of his head and jump back just like this. Or if you don't want to mess with it, just use your rope. All safe, all easy, good stuff, all done. Get on top of his head and then you just spam that enter door button until you finally make it through. The Ankh is gettable, you get out of there, then you simply slip past Olmec and then you can choose to either bomb your way down or use Olmec the standard way just to open the way to whatever exit you want to have. If you have the bombs to spare, you can skip crown and sword by using 10 bombs to crack ugly turtle's shell and then whipping the thing a whole hundred times. A lot harder to do with non-sticky bombs, but it's doable. This is technically a skip, but it's mostly something you might have to resort to if you mess up somewhere and you made it here without the sword. There are several ways to keep your Ankh if you go tide pool, namely by using clever bomb placement to give yourself a way out from the bottom of the level, or if you get super lucky, a secret entrance may generate down there that connects to the back layer and the way back up. It's easy to see, just watch out for a tunnel going sideways from here. Most of the time though, you'll have to rely on your bombs and your wits. It's different depending on your items. Are your bombs sticky with jizz? Find blocks without gold or gems up here, Place ropes like so, and then place the bombs exactly like this, holding up while facing away from the center rope. The powder kegs will fall around you without blowing up your bit of cover. If you ain't got no jizz, rope here and place four quick bombs in this precise spot. Look closely at the way your hand lines up with the texture, you'll need to be right here, unless you have the pitcher's mitt. Then you need to get a little bit closer to the atoll, line up the hand with the big brown zip right there. As soon as you place the bombs, jump on the rope, dodge the explosions, and there you go, a path upward. Whichever method you use, you'll need extra ropes or climbing gloves to get out of here, or a jetpack, but if you have a jetpack, what are you even doing here? You should be skipping the whole quest line. You see, if you can climb up to the sunken city entrance without Flyboy, you no longer need to jump through all the hoops to get them. You simply take care of the bow and ignore everything else. There are a lot of different ways to climb, and you can find a link to a video by Gugubo in the description breaking them down for you. Most are too difficult for me to pull off. The only ones I rely on are the easiest ones. The jetpack skip, which you are watching right now. Carefully flying up just like this. Real nice and easy. Nice and easy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Bladscape plus Climbing Glove skip, which is right at the ceiling of my Spelunky ability, and I still screw up now and then. It's certainly something you need to practice quite a bit before you can get it done reliably. Like I said, there are lots of ways to go about it. Check out Gugubo's video in the description for a thorough tutorial. Lastly, you can skip the entire ordeal from start to end by simply realizing you're torturing yourself for a meaningless challenge that will do nothing to improve your miserable life. Nearly every item is useful toward a cosmic ocean win, but there are two mutually exclusive items that will shape your run. The clone gun obtained in the stars challenge in Tidepool and the alien compass, which you get by following Van Horseface's side quest through Volcana and the temple. Besides letting you make out with yourself, the clone gun will allow you to clone the reward bag from a successful sun challenge in the sunken city for a total of 96 bombs and ropes, and it's definitely the easier path to follow. As a bonus, you'll find Tusk Casino Shack in your way, which has a good chance to provide you with items your run may sorely lack, you know, alongside the lifelong gambling addiction. <sighs> Following in your footsteps, Dad. The only real challenge here is taking the clone gun from the second level of Tidepool to the Ice Caves, where you can leave it with Gloop, and then retrieve it in the Sunken City, where hopefully Ratface won't troll you by spawning on 7-2. If you have the means and skill to skip the quest chain, it's as simple as carrying the clone gun for three levels until you reach the Ice Caves. But if you need to retrieve the Tablet of Destiny, you'll need the help of at least one hired hand so they can hold either clone gun or sword while you carry the other. 
I recommend giving them the clone gun as they no longer clone hermit crabs at the first opportunity. The handy slave is guaranteed at the bottom of the lake after you got forehead fish, but it helps tremendously if you hired hand is already trained, which happens after they survive enough levels alongside you. To have him go to sleep while holding an item, simply grab him while he's holding it, hang from a short ledge, hold the down button and let him go. The more they trust you, the longer they'll sleep without causing trouble. Feel free to explore your sexuality with this helpless victim. If you'd asked earlier in Spelunky 2's life cycle, I would have advocated for the instant and hilarious slaughter of whatever slaves you have as soon as you reach Abzu. But really, gone are the days of these fellows being insane agents of chaos ready to get you murdered as soon as you turn your back. A trained hired hand is in fact extremely useful for something else coming up. When you reach the sunken city, there's a chance the sun challenge will spawn on this second level, meaning you won't be able to carry both the bow and clone gun to it. But if you have an extra pair of hands, Ratface's trolling efforts will be in vain. Just be sure to actually carry your slave up to the sunken city entrance, since they are extremely prone to dying if left to fend for themselves at the bottom. The other mutually exclusive item is the Alien Compass, which points at the exit in the Cosmic Ocean. An invaluable tool for smooth brains like myself that can't ever seem to remember where the hell it was. It takes some doing to get it. Go to Volcana, free Van Horseface in 2-1, and then find him at the top of Vlad's castle. Vlad must die for the quest to continue. Now proceed to the temple and look for a dastardly hidden entrance, often tucked in a corner behind 20 crush traps and about 7 crockmen. There you'll find a cursed Van Horseface who'll reward you with the compass. Going to the temple, there's no way to skip using the Anka if you're trying to do the quest line. So if you want to keep that extra life, you must commit to climbing up to the sunken city entrance without your flying pet dragon thing. And that's why I only go for the alien compass if I find an early jetpack. The debate whether which big ticket item is better rages on among us nerds, but I lean in favor of the alien compass, but only if you're able to keep your rank for the temple. That extra life is just too damn valuable. While having tons of clone resources is super nice, the red arrow pointing to the way out has saved me countless headaches on who knows how many early deaths. And I found that most of the time, if you're just mildly conservative, the crates you find while going through the ocean will keep your supplies at a reasonable level. Y you know, when they're done giving you parachutes. With those two out of the way, let's run through all the other items you can have. As you might expect, the jetpack is king. It's laughable how much better it is than anything else you can find. It'll let you easily skip the quest line, keep your rank, make the alien compass worth getting, and generally make your entire run so much faster and easier. Sure, it can explode, sometimes even without fault of your own, but still the paths it opens and the mobility it provides are worth every bit of the risk. An early jetpack never fails to stop a sentence in its tracks and put a greedy smile on my face. Most of the time, it will only explode if you're bad. So get good, scrub! Get good! Vladscape is a distant second. Only if you have spring shoes and climbing gloves does it become almost equal in mobility. And you could make the argument that it's even better at that point since it's not flammable. Getting Vlad's cape is the main reason I never go to the jungle. A regular cape is third best and what you'll probably end up with if you had a stroke and decided to go to the jungle. Arguably the hover pack is better, but the hover pack explodes and a cape doesn't. The hover pack does have a substantial edge over a cape though. It makes the climb of a pointless patty a relatively easy skip. Check me out. Oh yeah, look at these moves, baby. Getting it done. The power pack is actually pretty nice if you skip the fuck you Jedi since it will allow you to dig down to Vlad's castle with far fewer bombs. Just be sure to roast all the turkeys on the way so you can survive the inevitable super explosion the moment a fireman touches your no-no place. The telepack and teleporter will provide you with hilarious ways to die. Try them out now and then for a fun change of pace. The climbing gloves are huge if you have Vlad's cape or a regular cape and a potentially deadly annoyance if you have a jetpack. I still always grab them though, because as you may be aware, jetpacks have a tendency to explode. And if you survive, then you'll need some other way to get around. Important to note, the climbing gloves now make you immune to thorns as you climb, making them extra useful in all those labyrinthine jungle levels. 
Spike shoes are a must-have for running on ice and the countless enemies you must trample. They are guaranteed to spawn in the background layer of the ice cave, so you only need to 1v1 a giant yeti monster, so there's never a reason not to have them. For numbskulls like myself, a capala is simply necessary by the time the cosmic ocean rolls around. Always do what you gotta to get your blood-soaked hands on one, and if Kali hasn't graced you with her presence, you always get an altar with plenty of reluctant flesh in Tasneo Babylon's hideout. Guaranteed to give you what you need unless you've been a filthy altar destroying heathen. <laughs> Paste and spring shoes are always great, nothing much to say about them, always worth theft and murder in my opinion. On the other hand, the regular compass is worthless in the cosmic ocean, and it's only useful in, you know, the same way the compass has always been useful. The skeleton key is trash, unless you get it early, allowing you to open both the Ujjadai chest and Van Horseface's prison without all the busy work. Yay. I converted late to the cult of the pitcher's mitt, but I've learned to appreciate its usefulness specifically for the cosmic ocean. One. There are a lot of one-tile corridors through which you'll want to throw things, and this makes sure you'll never miss your stone toss. Two, if your hands are empty, the mitt will catch errant projectiles or rocks and skulls instead of letting them damage you. Guaranteed to happen at least once per run. Just make sure you don't fall victim to an idiotic cell phone by dying to your own thrown arrow. A camera is surprisingly effective in the CO. Tons of enemies insta-die to it, triggers arrow traps, gives you vertical reach, and something no other item does. Reach beyond solid walls. The boomerang is also surprisingly great, gives you range and allowing for a much easier blood harvest if you're running low. While I don't go as far as advocating for either of them over the whip's versatility, you may want to give them a try and see how you fare. Lastly, the specs are actually great. Because in 99 levels, there's a pretty damn high chance of finding items embedded in the walls. Unfortunately, it's scripted into the game to spawn only items you already have. Everything else I didn't mention? Well, it's not worth mentioning. I'm telling you all this for a simple reason. It's tempting to ignore the lesser items, you know, not bother buying or stealing or murdering for those lowly specs, but it's always worth the trouble because if you're anything like me, you need every edge you can get. And seeing that jetpack in the wall because you violently robbed some shopkeeper's eyeglasses 30 minutes ago may make all the difference in the end. So, with everything we know about skips and items, we can develop the Cosmic Ocean Run flowchart for optimal grinding. Again, I tell you, these decisions are based on my skill level. You may choose different paths depending on what you can get away with. Here's the big picture, it's simple enough for even your mama to understand. Did you find a jetpack before Mole Man? No? Complete the quest chain through Volcana and take the clone gun to the sunken city. You did find a jetpack, well, get the alien compass, ignore the quest chain and hope you don't explode in Neo Babylon. And that's it. You may notice the jungle's complete absence from this thing. And yeah, as far as grinding out those 799 attempts, I deemed going to the jungle the objectively worst path, by quite a lot in fact. It takes a lot longer to navigate, the black market is a pain to find, you need to either spend time gathering money to get everything you want, or risk a dangerous hedget thieving strat, or fight your way through, which adds angry shopkeepers to the rest of the run. If you rescue vegetable ladies, you won't be able to do the old mess shortcut without pissing them off, and it's just more difficult overall with bear traps, man traps, curse flinging scumbags, boomerang stun lockers, and torch tossers in dark levels who will destroy your backpack 100% of the time. The extra items from the black market are just not worth it. Just go to Vlad's castle, get a guaranteed double jump, and become a blood harvesting maniac. Nothing against the jungle as a level, I think is a fun level, it's just the 799 grind, it ain't worth going there. In the description, you can find a link to a far more granular flowchart breaking down pretty much every single choice I make in a given run. I was going to just narrate it beat by beat, but this video is too damn long already. I do want to elaborate on the final fight against Chicken Snake because dealing with this son of a bitch without sticky bombs was a constant struggle not to get set on fire. Stumping the chicken head while going up, it's really not that difficult. 
but the spikes at the bottom mean that there's very little room for error. All it takes is a stray frog or water rushing up for you to miss the stump and plummet to your death. So I ended up with this strategy and it's actually pretty foolproof. Get the bow safe to the top, then come back down and try to properly time a 3 bomb attack. My success rate increased significantly when I realized you need to place them between the two heads because Hundun takes a sidestep every time he goes up. If you fail to do this, which happens pretty often, you'll just have to go for one Carly stomp at a time and it took me forever to find a safe way of doing this. Get to the far right of the level and jump in right after the chicken head gets close and throws a fireball. As you run to the other side, the chicken head will block the retaliation attack from his dumbass conjoined twin. Repeat this cycle until the chicken becomes McDonald's nugget paste and then it's a trivial thing to curb stomp the other to death. Now grab your bow, destroy the dreamer's eye, and finally carry on to the 94 levels of Cosmic Ocean. First, the basics. Each level is a random biome, with a random size and a randomly generated exit location guarded by the Cosmic Jellyfish. Three balls will be scattered throughout the level, and your goal is to pop all three. Once you do that, the jellyfish will be overcome with bloodthirst, and block the exit and hunt you down. Leave the level before you get vaporized and then you start the process all over again. You have up to three minutes until a second jellyfish starts chasing after you, and unless you're some consummate speed demon far above my league, the random nature of the cosmic ocean all but guarantees you'll be chased by jelly bro sooner or later. So here are some general policies to have. Understand the jelly's movement. The cosmic jelly moves faster than the ghost, but it's slow to turn. You'll often have to bait it in a certain direction, then quickly squeeze past it. Getting used to just how far it can reach and how sharply it turns will make a massive difference in survival. Unfortunately, there's not much I can teach you about that because this is one of those things that there's no substitute for practice. You have to get vaporized a bunch of times yourself. So just like I told my second late wife in her deathbed, hurry up and die. Be methodical. Adopt a step-by-step -step method and stick to it. This is a long marathon where the level of risk starts at high and randomly spikes up. The main reason you'll die here is because you lost focus. You got lazy, you got careless, you forgot something, and that's all it takes. My step-by-step -step changes depending on the biome and I'll often get distracted from it. But the general gist is this. Find an edge and check the entire perimeter for low-hanging fruit. If you didn't find everything this way, go back to the top and start exploring side to side, top to bottom. Grab all reasonable crates you see, kill everything that might become a threat, and harvest blood diligently. Make a mental note of the exit location as soon as you find it, and keep count of your bubbles. Once you find number three, first clear a path to the exit, then pop the bubble. It helps to leave exit adjacent balls for last, so you have an easy way out. Don't be frugal. I have yet to die without bombs or ropes in my inventory. In fact, you are far more likely to get wrecked because you tried to save that bomb or didn't want to spend the rope to make your life easier. You'll be better off spending bombs blowing up that cursed capable enemy. And another great investment is using bombs for that last hard to navigate bubble because it'll give you a nice bit of time to get going. I mean, don't squander your resources, but most of the time, if you're asking yourself, is this really worth the bomb? The answer is yes. Crates will keep you decently stocked unless you get extremely unlucky. Only start worrying about it if you drop to single digits. Hurry up and wait. You want to go slow because everything can kill you. But you want to hurry because Jelly Bro will come in three minutes. Where's the balance? Well, I used to go as fast as I could and get killed all the time by unforeseen dangers until I changed the way I moved. I adopted a stop-start pattern, like, like a little rodent exploring the unknown. Quickly move to the next screen or obstacle and stop to survey. Find a spike pit, stop to watch for whatever can throw you into it. Find force fields or spark traps, stop to figure out the patterns. You stop long enough to be safe, then quickly navigate to the next potential danger. I don't know if it will work for you, but this made a huge difference in my progress. It's like I finally accepted that my brain can't react fast enough when I move at top speed. Look up and down all the time. This is another big change that helped a lot. 
Instead of rushing everywhere, get used to constantly looking up and down, both to search for balls and to look out for dangers. It won't just save your life, it's likely to save you time in those occasional huge levels where you loop around endlessly without finding what you need. Beware the loop. Anything stuck in the loop has the potential to murder you in an instant. Even a broken arrow shaft will stun you long enough to make you go splat. I'm not saying don't use the loop, just pay attention to what's stuck in it, keep it as clean as possible, and use it only as a last resort if you are being closely chased by the jelly. All that being said, that only applies to the horizontal loop. The vertical loop, you should be abusing that all the time like it's a misbehaving steps on. Never forget, you can just go down again instead of climbing back up. Don't freak out about poison. Oh no, a stray green bubble popped in your butt and now you're slowly rotting inside. Well, I've died several times trying to keep up with the poison, actively seeking out enemies for their blood and getting damaged more than it's worth. Unless you're dying immediately, you should deal with it like a pro. Carry on like normal until the next temple level, grab a convenient corpse and look for a mummy. The flies will nest into the body until it becomes a bloated abomination, letting you gorge on that disgusting spew until Jelly Bros timer gets too hot to handle. It's a numbers game. My one and only win so far had a good few times where I could have easily died, but I got lucky. Don't get me wrong, you do need to get good, but if you're anywhere near my skill level, you still need some luck to make it to the end. So internalize it, don't despair, and simply keep trying until all the stars align for you. And now let's break it down by biome, we're almost done! It's always a relief when you get to a dwelling's level. The only big danger is flying arrows, which can be 100% countered by carrying the body of your victims with you. Lizards are public enemy number two, with their hilarious ability to stun lock you into the abyss, never charge out their faces in a tight space, and stomp everyone you find in your path. I didn't expect this at the start, but the jungle is actually number three in difficulty after the temple and Neo Babylon. Far too often, balls will spawn in secluded areas at the end of winding paths, making it a pain in the ass to find them, let alone get to them. This is the place where you want to constantly look up and down instead of blindly exploring, and 9 times out of 10, murdering that witch Dr. Scumbag is going to be worth it so you don't have to deal with a stray skull later on when you're panicking toward the exit. It's best to explore from top to bottom so you can deal with witch doctors and boomerang boys from above. Do like they're an old high school acquaintance at the supermarket and avoid their line of sight at all costs. Two things will destroy you in Volcana, and both of them drop on your head with little warning. Magmars and spike chain traps. My death gun in Volcana simply stopped as soon as I decided to never climb upwards. Instead, find the top of the level and methodically zigzag to find what you want. Do not touch any exploding robot that can break lava free, and beware falling platforms. If they get stuck looping, they are an instant kill when they hit you. Tide pool is another relative break from the madness, but don't be overconfident or you'll be real mad at yourself when you die. Stop at the edge of every coral spike pit and make sure there are no enemies ready to bump you into them, respect the hermit crabs and their insolent habit to spit on your face right before you whip them, and beware any claw attacks that fall free, it'll do something funky and end up stabbing you on the way back. Alongside Neo Babylon, the temple is what you save your bombs for. They'll let you skip past the several deadly gauntlets that are guaranteed to spawn in this place. If you see a temple level, be ready to move right away because Derek loves to spawn giant cross traps directly above the entrance. In fact, navigating this place is a constant challenge of avoidance. Don't trigger crockmen, don't trigger curse cats, don't trigger cross traps, don't get sniped by sorceresses. Always keep in mind that mummy cats see through walls and their curse buff will reach you through solid tiles. If you need to kill a crockman, two sticky bombs in quick succession will do it, just don't stand in the path of his telefrag. Only good thing here is the mummies and their irresistible vomit. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. You can relax in the ice caves. The main dangers here are explosion-related projectiles, which you can minimize by triggering said explosions yourself, and ceiling spikes. They create really annoying tight corridors where a single bad jump will be your end. It's it's mostly psychological, but they'll take a toll on your sanity. 
Just like in Volcana, don't trigger falling platforms if you can't make sure they'll be destroyed. This is the zone where you can best abuse the loop without much concern, though. What few things get stuck in it will be big and visible. Nothing is safe in Neo Babylon. Not even standing still. This is the zone where the stop-start moving patterns and the constant looking around and uh, doing the level from top to bottom, all that stuff may backfire because elevators will be all too happy to crush you when you're Surprise, busy locking down from the top. The easiest way to die here is a spark trap and their propensity to shoot flaming monsters at you. There's not much I can tell you about it other than uh, good, good. I'm paying attention to how they move and what they're about to hit. Bombs will make your path enormously easier in general, but this barrier right here is the one you should always destroy if you can afford it, because it will get in your way without fail when you're being chased by the jelly. Lastly, the Sunken City is one of the easier biomes. You only need to watch out for poison arrows, frog trap stuns, and warm meat making you explode from the inside out, all of which is not that difficult to avoid if you don't go too fast. Poison arrows in the loop are pretty much the biggest danger, very fast and hard to see. Just be on the lookout for those void facing traps. I'm always happy to see this place, especially if I'm running low on health. There's blood everywhere, so make Cali proud. <laughs> I'm a capital G gamer. And no other gaming test has challenged my abilities like the 799 grind. It was a little under 300 hours of gameplay before I got a win, and for most of my trying I wondered, maybe I should just quit, because it really seemed like I would never be good enough. It was only during the last, uh, I don't know, five hours or so when all this knowledge and behaviors that I have gathered kind of all came together and clicked in my head and I could finally feel that confidence that yes, I could finally, indeed, get this damn thing done. And still, when I decided to put this guide together, I figured it would be a short one, just like bang it out in a weekend. There couldn't be that much to say, right? Then, you know, I started writing out everything and you can see the runtime. Turns out you gather a huge amount of information in the course of this challenge. It's easy to lose sight of that when you watch those eldritch sub-1 hour 799 runs. But the thing is, besides the superhuman skill on display, there are a thousand plus hours of learning behind it. So be patient. Be tenacious. Blame every failure on something you did. And see what you can learn so it doesn't happen again. And, of course, pray you don't fall victim to Derek Yu's capricious designs. Don't worry, you will get there. Eventually.